we're so those will to... be contract jobs yeah. or, or it's similar. We're, we're, we're in a, as they say just recently on uh, Business Insider, we're in a gig economy. Yeah. yeah. Yeah, I read that article. Yeah, that was a disturbing article, actually. Mm-hmm. But accurate. And yeah. I'm a freelancer, so. Yeah. You know all uh, about it. No, okay. It's a gig economy. It's moving more and more towards that as the traditional notions of uh, American society and the American dream go by the wayside due to confluence of factors of politics and technology. Mm -hmm. And, you know, a a lot of the gig economy and the freelance world is, um, you know, it it used to be that as a freelancer, you can, and you still can make a considerable amount of money, but that's no longer the norm. You have sites like Fiverr, which I contracted through for a while where the, you basically, allow yourself to be contracted for a service for $5. Um, and you can increase at the more positive reviews you get, you can increase that amount by $5 to get to the point where like you're being contracted for $25 or whatever the case may be. But Fiverr then takes 20% of that. So, so after if, you've yeah. developed a reputation mm-hmm. on your lonesome, mm-hmm. then the site takes a cut of your profits. Yes, they take 20%. So if you made $5, you get 4 And it's a flat rate as opposed to a graduating or a declining rate, which is bad. And those are the sites that most people start off on now. Yeah. Because well, the bar- it, it the provides barrier a marketplace. Yeah, the barrier to entry is so low. Anyone yeah, it provides get, a marketplace, yeah. but like it's it's just it's exploitative, especially for anybody who's got any creative skill. Like I used to offer, uh, you know, like editing services or ghostwriting services through Fiverr, um, and I was barely making anything. But at the time, it it was supplementary supplementary income, um, but it still was. I mean, when you look at what. Uh, freelancers who have a client base already are able to charge and what they should be charging. And then you look at what you make on Fiverr and on markets like it, because there's a ton of them. Mm -hmm. Um, There's a ton of them where you have to bid for jobs. Uh, I mean, it's just exploitative. It's obscenely exploitative. And then if you were getting like, okay, say Fiverr, Fiverr takes the, the, 20% 20% and then you were getting your funds transferred to PayPal because it happens instantaneously rather than like three to five days for a bank transfer, then PayPal takes a fee. Yeah. And you get nickel and dime to death. Yeah. 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 All the middle the individual taking, consumer does. Yeah. And all it does is move the money up. Well, it, it shifts it around. Um, Certainly, well, the, it, the, the larger companies are aggregating more of those microtransactions, so they're, yeah. going, they're going to be the all, ones that get ahead. Well, it's not the all the roads are slowly... It. It's, it's the service provider mm-hmm. who's getting nickel and dimed. It's the labor that's getting nickel and dimed. Yeah. The, the management and, and the guys at the very top aren't getting nickel and dimed, and the consumer, because of the, 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 the flat fees... Mm-hmm. And the only way that you can charge more is through review. Mm-hmm. The consumer knows what they're getting. You can either take a risk on somebody that you're going to pay next to nothing, or you can look for somebody who is reputable and, and, and pay them a higher fee. Not necessarily yeah. what the work is worth. This is a very much economy that has been driven by the internet giving everything away for free for so long mm-hmm. because yeah. people think that they don't need to pay for anything. And it's very consumer attractive because oh, like absolutely. Dan was saying, the consumer knows exactly what they're paying. They're paying five bucks. The laborer doesn't always know what they're going to make from that because the PayPal fee, for example, varies depending on the amount that you pull in for the week. Um, I mean, it's a flat percentage, but how much of of that is going to be deducted from your pay unless, you know, yeah, we would we would all in this room sit down and do the math, but not everybody does. You know what I mean? So it's it's much it's and it's very consumer attractive, which, again, 
it brings in a, a bigger consumer base, which only it doesn't benefit the laborer. It only benefits the people who are running Fiverr and the people who are and the the laborers are competing with each other. Yes. Um, and you have people who where this is supplementary income. Yeah. So they can stay in longer, mm-hmm. while for f- those folks that are hoping or looking for any of these services to become a primary source of income because they do, they're struggling to find something else, they're being driven out of the market. Mm-hmm. Yeah, absolutely. And like I said, it's not just Fiverr. It's, there's a ton of websites where you even have to... There's a graphic design one that I can't remember the name of right now. I think it's like 100 Designs or something like that. Where Yeah, uh, yeah it's like 500 somebody, Designs or something like that. Yeah, something like that where, where yeah. a, a potential, a prospective client puts out a job that they want done. And then it's up to the freelancers on the site to bid on that job. Yeah. And, you know... 99 the, Designs. 99 designs. Thank you. Yeah. yeah um, the, uh, the folks over at uh, Twit, which isn't, you know, the largest podcasting network out there other than um, Podcast One. And they, they have used uh, 99 designs to get logos for their shows on occasion. You know, specialty logos and things like that. And they'll, they'll, they'll bid it out. And I think they've, bought like six of them last time, you know, from different artists that were doing them. It's like, yeah, I like that one, and I like that one, and I like that one, and they bought them all. But not everybody's going to do that, and it takes time and skill to do these things. Oh, mm-hmm. yes. As Heath Ledger's I- Joker said, if you're good at something, never do it for free. And it's something that you will even, well, we're already seeing it in uh, in the literary world. I've talked about Kindle Unlimited before, but I'll just very briefly sum up how it relates to this, is that it's a subscription-based service kind of like Netflix, where you pay $9.99 a month to read as many Kindle Unlimited books as you want. Mm-hmm. And that is starting to drive down the price of novels that are not in programs like this because they want to be able to compete with the buffet option. Yeah. And so, whereas it was in, and not that long ago, I'm talking like maybe three to five years ago, it was very easy to make a living as a self-published author in the right genres, in the popular ones. You can't do that anymore. It every, every month there's some new thing that, Amazon rolls out that takes money away from the author while keeping the price the same or lower for the consumer and the profit margin higher for Amazon itself. Because they're able to attract more consumers. Yes. And that's and what they'll And guarantee keep doing. monthly income. Right. So, yeah, but at this point, what they're doing is they're then going to drive down the quality of the product that they're selling in mass. Yes, they already have. Yeah. But it takes a while for the market to correct. Yeah. That's true. And that yeah. while, especially nowadays, um, can be a couple of years. And to be honest, and that's consumers for the most part are not worried about the lowering of quality because of the buffet option. Yeah, because they, they can, it. if they if they get you know a quarter of the way through a book and say, this is bullshit, this is crap, they can just toss that off their Kindle and grab a new one at yeah. no additional cost to them. Right, and so, what, what Amazon is doing is they're looking at the percentage of the book that gets read. Yes. Right, and, and that's what they're paying And authors are paid well. by the page read yeah. is the thing. And that amount varies from month to month, mm-hmm. depending on how much Amazon de- uh, decides to put into the Kindle Unlimited fund. They're partially funding it. So it's dependent on how much they decide to put in there, and then that's distributed amongst all authors for pages read. So we're talking about, you know, ever since the program rolled out, I believe it's been less than half a cent per page read. Um, I think the last one was 0.047. Yeah. So a little less than half a a cent. cent. A page read. Per page read. Yep. Hmm. And uh, consumers, readers aren't likely to bulk at the system because um, 
I mean, why would they? They they don't have any yeah. incentive to do so. The, the, they're again, getting exactly what they want. Yeah. Mm-hmm. Time being, it's, they're getting exactly what they want. Mm-hmm. So what it, Amazon's going to have to do is add in more legacy works, things that have already been done at high quality. Yep, they have, and they have. Oh, yeah. They've got J.K. Rowling in there. But what's interesting about the legacy works that they're adding is that they don't have to be Kindle exclusive like everybody else does. Right. J.K. Rowling continues to sell her books at various bookstores, um, even ebooks. They're available at Barnes and Noble and iTunes and everywhere else. Mm-hmm. These authors that they're bringing in that are big names are not under the same contract that everybody else is. The contract that I've been under, and I recently left the program, but the contract that that still stands to this day for everybody else is you must be exclusive to Amazon. You cannot publish anywhere oh. else. But these big name authors that they're able to draw in, they're able to do so because they nix that part of the contract. Right. Mm-hmm. Nobody Which, would again, take it otherwise. It, it's, yeah. it's They're already proven. And so Amazon will bend over backward because they want that sweet, sweet money <laughs> to get the big name. As opposed to you being grown within the service. Because, mm-hmm. again, as you say, the buffet option. Yep. Yeah, we have prime rib that's on Sunday. Uh, but the rest of the time, we've got the rest of this stuff. But are, are they on charging Sunday. $5 a book? What do you mean? For Who, Kindle books? Uh, it, depends. It, it depends. If you're in Kindle Unlimited, you're, yeah. you're just playing the, the, the flat fee. But um, right now, the average novel price for an ebook uh, is two ninety nine to three ninety nine, and most and we're seeing more and more like and I mean because I consult with other authors constantly, like a huge network of other authors specifically in the romance genre, and the reason why is because that is the highest selling genre across the board. And every single one of them says that they're seeing the novel price driven down from two ninety nine to ninety nine cents. Ugh. Um, and well, this got... is where unions become a, necess- a necessity. Right, yeah, right. but try to try to manage some collective bargaining on I was just authors. about to say, try yeah. to get self-publishers to organize. Yeah. I've tried. Yeah. I've tried. Selena Kitt has tried. Selena Kitt is, uh, I mean, she's huge. She, she publishes, she has her own publishing company. Um, she's tried, um, Lots of, of different authors and, and indie publishers and, and self-published people have tried, but unfortunately, it's crabs in a bucket in the way that freelancers, for the most part, um, because they're coming you, a lot of the time from dire straits or because they're like, oh, yay, I get to work from home. Like, this this really suits me as a, as a stay-at-home mom or whatever the case mm-hmm. is. They don't yeah. want to rock the boat. They're yeah. afraid. They want to be uh, grateful for what they have. So wait, is crabs as as is crabs Amber, in a bucket? I'm right there with you, though. Is <laughs> crabs in a bucket the same as herding cats? A crabs in a bucket is like <laughs> a, a crab tries to get out, and all the other crabs pull it back in. Oh, uh, okay. I had not uh, heard that uh, that phrase. Okay. Yeah, as soon as I start writing and start doing independent publishing myself, I am right there with you about forming a union. I will be right there beside you. <laughs> Excellent. But, there'll be there'll be literally dozens of us. I'll. The the Yay, other, dozens. Well, the, it's the dirty dozens that usually causes a problem in the formation. Well, I mean, of 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 unions, of is, just just uh, doing some quick math here. Imagining a book is roughly two hundred pages. Mm-hmm. Um, yeah, point four seven cents per point, page. Point zero four seven. Oh, point zero four seven yes. cents per page. Not forty seven cents a page. No, no, less than I, half, that's oh, what I mean. Okay. Yes. Point, so a little point less than half a cent. seven cents. Mm-hmm. Yeah. Uh, if they're selling the book for ninety nine cents, that's point four nine cents a page. So <laughs> they're they they're not doing anybody any favors by allowing the prices to just go to nothing. Well, they're enrolling more authors in the Kindle Unlimited program, is is what yeah. ends up happening. Yeah, their 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 goal is just to have more authors there to just content. Yeah, just to have more and more mm-hmm. content, and well, just as like you, you see with the subscription yeah. services like Hulu, like Netflix. Once you get to a certain point, you can get those prime rib options. You can get those big authors, which will get people to sign on for the subscription. 
And the thing is that the other thing that helps sustain the program is you have these indies that don't really have many other places to turn to. So they, they'll sign this contract, essentially signing away their rights Mm -hmm. and getting fed crumbs and telling Amazon that they're grateful for it. Mm -hmm. Please, sir, may I have some more? Yeah, that's, that's exactly what's happening. And it's frustrating. There are definitely authors out there who are able to profit off of the program, but Usually, those authors are running, uh, for the most part, the authors I've seen that have done um, spectacularly well under Kindle Unlimited. And they're still losing profits every single month because they, they post their numbers and I, I see it. But the ones that are doing spectacular, spectacularly well, making close to 10K or more a month, are the ones that are employing ghostwriters at either a very, very low fee from places like Fiverr or other gig marketplaces to produce enough content per month that it makes up for it. And they've got like their mailing list and they've got degrees in marketing and and things like that. So hmm. like in it's, the video game market, it's the shovelware solution. Yeah. Yes. It's that. It's also, as I've listened to a number of writing podcasts, it's also the idea of the, yeah, you're spending half your time, maybe 40% of your time, actually writing your content to get out you know, what you want, minimum four novels a year or a couple of very short stories in a month. The rest of the time you're spending is literally on marketing. Mm-hmm. And yep. when they pay ghostwriters, they can release four or five novels a month. <sighs> if the rate is right. low enough, why not? Yeah. So, um, if I was editing the podcast, this entire section on authorship would go in another another segment because this is definitely we segued from Science. robots taking over the world, well, robot yeah. delivery systems to Amazon giant corporations, and you know it's it's valid because Amazon's also working on drone delivery too, so. Yeah, it segues. Yeah, but it was s- a, it was a statement on the gig, the, the yeah. nature of the gig, and how it's exploitative. Yeah, so that is that's where we are, and it it definitely. I think. Do you want Blade Runner? Because this is probably how you get Blade Runner. You know the sl- Nexus Six Ghost Riders. Yeah, mm. the the decline into that. Yeah, you're going to have to buy replicants in order for them to write for you, or something. I don't know. Um. So, on back on to science. Mm. 